uh, I designed this <coughs> OMM optic mount modular. Uh, it comes in two different versions. We've got an aim point variant, which follows like the micro pattern. And then we've got a uh, Picatinny riser. So any direct mount to rail style lower third optic. Um, case in point, the EXPS3 here we have. Uh, we designed it for specifically, but anything that clamps to the rail like that, say like a uh, Romeo AT or a Vortex UH1, anything like that, um, this will be the riser you're gonna wanna run for that. And then the way we have this configured is we've got the uh, OMM pick riser. We've got a short board attachment on there, which allows for us to have the uh, stock flip to side. Magnifier, I love the EOTech magnifiers, uh, super clean and crisp. I've been running this little shorty three by, I don't know what it's called anymore, G43 or something. But I like this G43 on here. I also have a G33 that I've been borrowing from a friend, <laughs> but I bought this G43. But yeah, it goes right onto that short board attachment. Uh, completely optional. Uh, we sell everything separately, so you don't get railroaded into something that you don't need. So we've got the riser here, and we've got the short board attachment. Allows for magnifier to attach. And, uh, two points of contact. We've got two screws that are uh, converging. So from the vertical plane and the horizontal plane for any of these attachments. And uh, it actually like overlaps onto the base mount itself. It's machined out of 70, 75 T6. So super rigid, um, will hold zero. Short board or long board attachment, which you'll see I've got to show you some different configurations that we can put this thing in. Uh, you can run a laser up front if you want. Um, on a full rail system, I don't think it's necessary, but some guys are starting to dig that configuration. And then uh, I also have room on that long board with the EOTech style lower third pick riser um, where I'm running a, a clip on thermal. And there's plenty of clearance for battery and everything all lines up nicely. The pick mount, and I've just attached a long board and uh, we're mounting this thing up. So we'll put the uh, Geotech EXPS3 on there, which puts us at that 2.5 inch optical center line. But like I said, you can use whatever direct mount lower third system you've got, Romeo 8T or Tex UH1. Like, I just keep saying the same one because I actually have owned both. Right. <laughs> so that's the one I know of. I'm sure there's plenty others out there. Yeah, we got the pick mount. Like I said, you've got to run the short, uh, sorry, the long board up front if you want to get clearance of your laser and battery and all that stuff without having to take the laser off to change the battery. There we go. So, battery clears. That's the end goal on the long board, EOTech mounted to the rear. So pick riser, long board attachment only. And then like I said, we'll add the optional. Again, all of these attachments are optional. Heck, the whole thing's optional. Don't buy it if you don't want it. <laughs> the mount itself, you can run standalone. And the attachments, uh, like I said, if you've got things that you want to attach, go ahead and get those so it all works together. Um, and then, like I said, we'll put the uh, short board on the rear so we can show you uh, magnifier, EOTech for optic, day optic, night optic, and then your uh, end goal, laser. The whole surface of this allows for clamping. Obviously, if you've got a bar or whatever, you need to run it in the slot, but the whole surface, even like the, uh, <clears throat> the bridge gaps between the short board, long board to the main mounts themselves, that's all surface that allows for Picatinny to lock. We'll show you the full configuration, laser, magnifier, optic, all that good stuff. All right, so in this configuration, we've got the uh, OMM pick mount with a longboard attachment. Uh, and on the pick mount itself, we've got an EOTech EXPS3. And then we've got the Engal on the front with the uh, longboard on there. And then we've got a short board attachment on the rear for our G43 magnifier. And then uh, remember boys, two is one, one is none. UHP and the end goal, just in case one doesn't make it. <laughs> Psych. But uh, we've got 
at the 45 here, the uh, pressure switch cover. Um, that allows you to run with the laser, push far forward if you want, or even on the rear, so it keeps your hands out of the way, so you don't obscure a laser or anything like that if you mount it to the rear. And it uh, negates ND, so you've got to be pretty uh, deliberate to activate your laser. You're gonna come to this, allow you to activate your laser here, and then we've also got another one on the opposite side for uh, like the Surefire flashlight switch, that ST07 tape switch. Nice secure way to mount it over that 45. And again, uh, helps you to keep yourself from ending like a white light or a laser. We don't know who's running nods these days and everybody's gonna see that white light. Also, we've got our rail covers that have cable routing all through them. So it keeps all of your cables nice and tight and clean. Nothing snagging, nothing getting out of the way. And then extra grip and uh, on these thin M-lock rails, they heat up pretty quick, especially if you're running suppressed. And uh, these allow for a lot of uh, heat protection from that rail system as well. Here, here's a different upper. So like I was telling you, borrowing a friend's G33 here. On the short board, we've got the main uh, OMM pick lower third riser here, uh, holding that EOTech and then on the long board here to clear the Wilcox mount currently. We've got the, uh, yeah, Voodoo S clip on thermal. So yeah, it's a lot, but I think it brings a lot of capability, something that you wouldn't have been able to do previously um, uh, at an elevated position. So like I said, gives you two ways to passively engage with night vision, right? So got this in this configuration passive engagement with just the uh, EOTech itself on night vision. And then we've also got the thermal capability. That's actually day or night. So um, I don't know, just brings a lot more to the fight than you used to be able to. And then that 2.5 inch eye line, healthy heads up shooting, right? I don't have to, uh, and I know there's a lot of guys that prefer multiple heights. I don't know. I just found like this 2.5 was a was a perfect height, um, kind of a standardized number as well. Um, no like weird decimals or anything in there. Definitely not that 291 or anything like that. But uh, yeah, this 2.5. I don't know. I found it's easy to find every time. Nice heads up. It's right there. Uh, yeah, makes it super easy to find out nods too. So what's cool about, well, I guess technically this one's reversible, but I mean, it's the exact, it's like a twin tip snowboard, <laughs> but uh, what's cool about these micro mounts is that it is reversible and it does do something different when you reverse it. So in this configuration, we've got it uh, set for like that forward lean and uh, running it as a standalone optic mount here. So recoil lugs, front and rear, and then like these mini clamps, stainless steel, so you can really torque into them without really worrying about it too much. But yeah, get this in that config right there, standalone. This is a super lightweight way to run if you're just looking for the optic itself. And uh, T25 Torx for the uh, clamp screws. And then we've got uh, T25 and T20. Once you take these covers off, then you'll have the clamp or the interface for uh, any of the, the short board or long board attachments. So yeah, these will be T20 on and off for these covers. Those are like, Thread protectors, you'll see when I take those things off, you've got some machine surfaces in there and some threaded areas so you can do your attachments. But in the meanwhile, there's how she runs as a standalone mount. Like I said, we've got a, a super lightweight in this configuration, but now we've got like forward lean. I know for these uh, 
infinity eye relief mounts. You run them, some guys like to run them super far forward and uh, this allows for that. You can still run a laser up front with a short board on here. You can still run a magnifier on the rear with a short board on here. There's just kind of a gap and I think it's more of an aesthetic thing than it is a performance thing. So some guys might choose to turn this thing around. I'll show you that configuration next. All right, and then uh, in this configuration, we've got it lean back. Just showing you that option as well in the standalone configuration. So T25 for the uh, clamp bolts, like I said. And then we've got, if you get the, uh, the micro mount itself, it comes with all the hardware you need and all the bits. So you'll have like a T25, a T20, and then you also have a T10 because it comes with the mounting screws. So you don't have to worry about anything. If you got an aim point or a micro pattern optic, if you get the mount, it's got all the hardware you need. Plus all the bits, all you need is a driver. So I don't know, <laughs> you supply the driver, we got your bits. <laughs> so I just took the rear cover off. Um, it's just a single T20 and this is what the covers look like just like a machine surface protector, a thread protector, plus it makes it look not weird. Um, and then here's your shortboard attachment. So I've got this thing in that like swept back or lean back configuration. I put that shortboard on there. There's actually two threaded areas, like I said, converging. So from the horizontal and the uh, vertical plane, and that's how we get this thing to line up and hold zero. So you can reuse the, uh, the screw that came with your cover. Whenever you buy a short board or a long board attachment, it comes with the two screws that you need. So like the short top screw and then the uh, long um, bottom screw. And you'll notice on these short boards, it's just like minimal amount of uh, material. It's got an undercut like all your guys' haircuts a few years ago. We tighten these things down. We've got two screws, creates a clean surface, three Picatinny slots, and then that'll allow for magnifiers. Magnifiers! Nice thing on there, there we go. There it is. So dual lightweight stainless clamps, same design as the, uh, the Picatinny variant. Torque screws, cause who in the world would ever use Allen heads or, or hex? But now in this configuration, you've got your T2 or whatever micro pattern optic you've got. And then we've got our magnifier here. So. And they're all in alignment. Ignore the rest of this upper, but just showing you the configuration. So you can have magnifier, optic, and then laser, um, all with the short boards on the micro pattern. So it's pretty sick. Like this allows for battery clearance either forward or in the rear position. So remember how this one's kind of leaned back. Uh, just so we close the gap between our magnifier and the optic itself. And then we've got our laser targeting system on a short board mount here. So short boards interchangeable between uh, the Picatinny riser version, uh, like I said, for like lower third style optics. Uh, these attachments are completely interchangeable. But voila. <laughs> so at this 2.5 inch height, yeah, look at me, I'm wearing nods. But at this 2.5 inch height, uh, optical center line, uh, found it super easy to find your, uh, your actual optic on night vision. It basically comes right up to where your tubes are without you having to move your head or anything. Super convenient, so I'm not searching for anything. It does allow for actual passive engagement. And um, it does, super effective. Like I love shooting in EOTech. Uh, style optic, big window, night vision settings. 
really nice for uh, running passive but that 2.5 inch perfect height here and uh, yeah passive engagement definitely does have an application especially today's uh, battlefield I mean like even 2014 the place I used to work we stopped doing the laser light shows external to the target uh, we had a lot of laser discipline even back then uh, these days like no way am I activating that laser unless absolutely necessary. Um, and caveat to that is if you are doing any type of raid or going internal to a target, um, <coughs> lasers are a must, they're necessary. So they're a communication tool. Uh, so when you're clearing with the team, it allows people to know that things are being held on, who's holding on what. Um, and obviously if you go into a room and there's not really much ambient light, this is your ambient light source. And I'd much rather activate a laser than a white light. <laughs> so yeah, uh, definitely lasers have a place and they shouldn't be going away anytime soon. And uh, it's worth the risk, like I said, internal to a target, uh, a little bit of illumination of IR light splash going out of a window or something like that. Uh, yeah, we've tested it, had guys uh, standing on the outside, staring at the building as we were clearing it with uh, lasers internal, and they could barely see any light flashes. It would be more like somebody internal had flipped on a light and turned it off really quick, or maybe a TV was flashing or something like that. But um, the likelihood of somebody staring at what you're clearing <laughs> outside with nods on and be like, oh yeah, there's a clearance going on in there with IR lasers uh, is low. And like I said, much much worth that little risk of detection. Uh, it's way worth that risk of uh, detection, possible detection, for you to be able to communicate with the team internal to the target and also to be able to PID everything that's going on in there. people are going to freak out because there's two lasers on there. 